Hey guys, TJ here. I'm signing back on to Alan Wick. So we are two years in the past and Alan has a killer hangover after who knows how much drinking he did the night before. Ah, oh, the sunglasses made the world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. I wasn't sure I'd make it out there without some painkillers. The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. I almost wanted to say, after like having it like this, I was wanting to go, Max Payne! Because the painkillers, again, I know for a fact, are the healing item. There was a message waiting for me on the machine. Golden guns. Is that another reference to Max Payne? Or am I just looking for references where there are none? You have one new message. Ow! Are you still asleep? Wakey, wakey! You should have your show on your TiVo. If Alice wasn't too mad to record it, then she called me earlier and really chewed me out. Yeah, yeah, we went a little overboard last night. But parties are a part of this business. Al, look, I'm saying this is your friend. She's not doing your career any favors by trying to run your life like that, okay? I'll talk to you later, Al. Watch the show! <sighs> She's not doing any papers for you. Partying is not part of the business. I'd been a guest on the talk show the previous night, talking about my latest book. The show was supposed to be waiting for me on our TiVo. Alright, uh, how bad did this go? Welcome back to the Harry Gallet Show. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We have a great show tonight. I've been talking with the best-selling author, Alan Wake, about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm going to be honest here. Is that wise? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> but this last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. You selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. And now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the ladies. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. With Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So, how's the publicity tour been treating you? Good, great. But I gotta say, I'm glad to be back home in New York. Well, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. Uh, you are famous for that temper. <laughs> well, I did also write several books. <laughs> well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who haven't bought it yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for his Sam. There he is. 
and of our musical guests, Poets of the Fall. Thank you, and good night. At least I've been funny. I told myself I could live with that. Hey, honey. Did you watch the show? I didn't say anything stupid, if that's what you want to know. Okay, Grumpy. You want an announcement or something? Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? Go back to sleep, Alan. What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah. You're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. And look at where that ended us. Look at where that ended you guys up. To be fair, definitely could not have seen this coming. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. But why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Good luck, Al. See you later. That was actually kind of sweet. When I got out, it was warm and sunny. I'd flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I'd stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake. About to use the clicker. That's where I was headed. Then let's go. We got a hell of a long way to go, though. Especially since I have no doubt the Dark Presence is going to do everything in its power to stop us. Alone, in daylight, surrounded by the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape, it was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this, having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed. There would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set. All right, time to uh, crash the car. <sighs> It's weird. When I'm playing video games, I can. Never mind. But basically, it's a bad idea for me to drive because I can get easily distracted. IRL. I found that out while I was trying to get in my hours. Almost crashed into an Impala in a parking lot. A parked Impala in a parking lot.
Oh. Huffing it from here. The darkness had touched me. There was a link between us. Always would be. I could feel its presence again, getting closer. Chill. I will kill your wife. How did it suddenly turn to dark? I called it. Everything in her power. You better not. Bitch! Alright. Roadkill time. Out of my way. Don't care. Rest up, and then we'll jump. Baby! I see my baby in there. Based on the signature in the motel register, Agent Nightingale had stayed here, in room number two. Room number two, you say? Refundable, 100%. 100%? 100% security dis deposit. At least it's non-refundable. No personal justice. Check out 10 a.m. No loud music. No pets. One vehicle per unit. Facilities for guests only. No visitors allowed after 9 p.m. That part's fair. Uh, along with the loud music. Okie dokie. Whoa. Jeez, man, you were obsessed. So much obsessed. This had obviously been the room where Agent Nightingale had stayed when he hadn't been busy harassing me. He was reading that. Uh, the stupid heart. Give yourself back, you co-workers. Could have fooled me, pal. And I didn't look in the other. <laughs> Y'all done? Alright. Time to jump. I think. Hang on. Do I need to? Or could I just drive down? Uh... No, I think I need to jump. No, though. No. It's more fun. Your 
really gonna need to line this up. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Out of my way! <gasps> okay. Flares. Just a flare. Thanks. Oh. Ow. Honestly, I am beyond sick of your shit, bitch. Beyond. What the hell is that for? This is the typical shit that she pulls. Along with that. You felt it did fall off, idiot. What? Ow! That's what I get for taunting for taunting the enemy. That's that's what I that's what I fucking get for taunting the bitch. Oh my god! Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Maybe. Just maybe. Uh... I should probably also be using the flares to help out. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. I thought you, that would have been funny if you went flying. Hey, you know what? I'll say it again. I'm beyond done with your shit, bitch.
Oh, come on! Can we get me storm the way back here? I should have checkpointed. Hard cut! I can't see shit! Nice to see you, too. Oh, I, uh, I think we know part of the dangers of, um being anywhere near where you're throwing a flashbang. At least that close. Out of my way. Dip. Hey, bail. Okay, me now fighting other cars. from here to clean them all up. Just the ones that are keeping me from progressing. I could have done better there. Like, no joke. Thank you for the ammo, though. Ah! 
Alter, Alter, Alter. Hey, bitte. I would appreciate it if you would, um... Stop with the swarming and the overwhelming. That was way too much. Yeah? You gotta try harder. And by that I mean, please stop swarming me. Huh? More driving, huh? Alright. Are we there yet? I see a light. I'm gonna go to it. Especially when it's marked with the the yellow paint. Little visitors must be the yard manager. Liability waiver. This is, uh... Get done. I swear to God, these guys can never take a hint.
Ever, ever. Hi, hey. Oh, that opened the gate for me. Still dry. Oh. Well, never mind. This is where we get off. Holy crap, I just noticed the time. Okay, well, I guess this is where I'm going to end the episode. We'll continue in the next one. Till then, I'm signing off. Bye-bye.